welcome to Nutrition 101, where we eat our medicine, and of course, where we live overall healthier lifestyles. Class is in session. Welcome back to my series, Inside Equals Outside. This is Skin Makeover Part 2. Sorry it took so long to come out with this one. Uh, kids are graduating, and it's June, and some competitions came up, and family reunion, and Father's Day, so I got a little delayed, but I'm back on track. So, if you remember on part one, we went over what not to eat, what to avoid in our diet to help us reach better overall healthier skin. So if you like that information, make sure you share this, punch that like button, and definitely subscribe because this is some information that you're going to want to get. All right, so... Part one, like I said, what we avoid. Part two is what to take in. Uh, what we're going to take in our bodies. How are we going to improve our diet to help us have better skin, right? So, let's get started. First one is drink more water. I'm not going to say this is necessarily number one, but it's grossly overlooked. So, I had to put it at number one because there are more people lacking hydration and water um, than you would think. Uh, and it's not just about drinking water, staying hydrated, but that's going to come into a later video. But I just want to say for now, you want to drink water. Plenty of it, too. Men are going to drink three liters, at least. Women want to be at two liters. And athletes, no matter what sex, will be three to four liters. All right? Get enough of that. This is a good time when, to drink it is when you first wake up in the morning. I like to just roll out of bed, still rub my eyes. I'll walk over to the sink. I'll put a little apple cider vinegar in a glass, a big 16 or 20 ounce cup, actually. I fill it with like room temperature, maybe even on a little warmer side of water. Fill that up, guzzle it down. Don't walk away from it, just down it. And there you go, you start your day off. What you can do is just close your eyes and actually feel the water like waking up your skin and you're going to feel it right away like if this is how you can get more in tune with your body you know recognize it relax just just take the time take a big sip put the water down put your arms down just let the water f hit your bloodstream hit your skin and wake you up so that's one way it kind of revitalizes you it kind of makes you also a little bit full so you won't make bad food choices right away in the morning right because that's what happens you wake up you're hungry and you just start reaching for like Whatever your mind feels like it's having, particularly sweets or cereal, drink that water. That should help temporarily, and then you can make a better food choices. All right, moving on to number two, bone broth. Okay, as, as you know, it's a superfood, right? It's one of the best things we can consume when we want to heal the inside of the body, which is what we're trying to do, right? We want to heal the gut, which we talked about in the first video, leaky gut. Right, bone broth can do that with all these healing properties, but it contains some very um, important amino acids like proline and glycine, which is like collagen, pre-collagen, right? It makes up collagen, right? but it also has glucosamine, chondroitin, and hyaluronic acid. Those are for hair, skin, and nails. Glucosamine, chondroitin, and hyaluronic acid is found in uh, the uh, joints and cartilage of animals. Hyaluronic acid can be found on the, in the skin of chicken, right? So if you're doing organic chicken, which I recommend, you know, it wouldn't be worth eating the skin if it was not organic chicken. You can get hyaluronic acid, right? But you don't have to eat that because you can just all get it in bone broth. You can make your own or what I do is I get a powder. I do a scoop or two a day, a scoop in my, in my smoothie and maybe even one in some hot water. Uh, like if I, if I do a no flavor, Hot water just kind of make a broth it tastes like a very diluted very diluted like chicken broth or chicken soup if you were to give it a taste but otherwise it would go in my smoothie and that's how we get the bone broth but again you can make your own big pot only lasts a couple of weeks it becomes a little pricey a little time consuming because you have to cook it for like 48 hours in a, in a crock pot okay number three antioxidant rich foods okay we hear this word going around a lot antioxidant rich foods well Antioxidants protect our body, and some people might wonder why. Why we have, why do we need that? You know, I eat pretty healthy, 
but you know we have free radicals in the air we don't we don't eat everything organic right we there are some oils we might eat or some sugar we might eat and you know we breathe in dirty air it's, that's just that's just the world we live in so we need antioxidants because it protects the body it helps us to kind of separate the toxins from our food and then of course release it into the liver and the liver kind of flushes that out we can get that through green tea oregano specifically oregano essential oil but you could also eat oregano and as the herb and, and spice i recommend that as well but the essential oil is great not too much of it and you can't be on it too long but you can consume it and that is really good for antioxidants Cinnamon, I consume every single day, and anything I can get that can get cinnamon in it. Usually, if it's something sweet like oatmeal or or yogurt or my smoothies, cinnamon is going inside it no matter what. All right. Also, I also do uh, like a raw cocoa. I didn't put it here, but I do a raw cocoa beans, like a powder, organic or raw cocoa, pretty much every single day in my my bear in my chocolate banana smoothies. All right. Dark berries which you know are going to be your blackberries, blueberries, cranberries, things, like, things along that nature. Try to grow organic. Again, if it becomes very expensive, so you can buy them frozen, which is what I do. I buy a big frozen bag of mixed berries, and I use those for my smoothies. Beans, high in sugar, so you want to be careful, but very rich in antioxidants and greens. Now, a lot of times you see foods antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, that's true. A lot of a lot of foods do have both properties, right? So they kind of can be linked together, okay? But if we eat a lot of these, we're not going to need these, right? If we eat a lot of antioxidant-rich foods, we're protecting our body. We're getting we're getting rid of any toxins that we might have, and we won't have as much inflammation, or maybe no inflammation, right? If we don't have inflammation, then we don't have we don't really need anti-inflammatory rich foods but again they go hand in hand so leafy greens are going to be antioxidant rich foods and they're going to be anti-inflammatory rich foods specifically leafy greens which has chlorophyll more like borophyll nah sorry about that that was a movie reference but if you know it you know it <laughs> all right so yeah anti-inflammatory rich foods leafy greens probably one of the best ones you can consume again you want to eat these foods because of the end game, right? Which is to live an overall healthier lifestyle. You don't necessarily have to love these foods. I don't always love all these foods, but I eat them because I know what I want in the end. And that's better skin, bigger muscles, health, healthier body, feeling good, looking good. That, if, if, that's, if that's your goal, then you want to do these things. Of course, you can make these foods taste really good, but I happen to love everything on this, on this list. So uh, I have no qualms with that. Turmeric, uh, I've spoken about before. It's a pretty much a legal, natural antibiotic, right? This is like high anti-inflammatory. If you're not quite sure what anti-inflammatory what inflammatory means, it means anything with the word itis in it. So if you if you have something some kind of ailment and it ends in itis, it generally means there's inflammation in your body, right? So this helps to knock that off. So you got turmeric, not as bad as you think. If you just eat it in a spoon. I don't like that either. But, you know, I throw it on my meat, throw it on my chicken, throw it on my eggs, follow it with pepper. You must have black pepper. I mean, uh, cayenne pepper with the turmeric because you need a pepper to accompany turmeric for it, for you to get the most effect, uh, optimize the effect of turmeric. So do that. All right, salmon, right, really good as far as healthy fats. <clears throat> really, really good as far as omega-3. And obviously... It's an anti-inflammatory uh, rich food, okay? Kind of prevents bad bacteria from building up. And that's the same thing with coconut oil. It stops bad bacteria from building up. Doesn't necessarily kill them. Some do, some don't. Anti-inflammatory rich foods, but we want to stop them from growing. We, don't, we want to make an environment where bacteria can't grow, and bone broth is really good for that as well, and everything on this list here. So again, you can group these together. Um, a lot of these foods are going to be the same, like greens, like berries. Berries can fall into this as well. Okay, coconut oil and salmon that could even fall into healthy fats. But again, I just had to categorize them just to 
just to give you an idea this way you can itemize it yourself right all right so your potassium rich food is number five well we need potassium because it's one of the most important electrolytes which i had mentioned staying hydrated it's not just about drinking water it's about electrolytes so it also uh, helps to you know curb your appetite gets rid of sugar cravings Again, if we're trying to fix our diet and you have issues with sugar and carbs, potassium will take care of that, right? Just like I showed with my avocado Fred. He's not around right now. I'm surprised he's not here, but he, um, he'll show you that avocados, very rich potassium, amongst other things, will stop sugar cravings and will stop insulin spikes. And this should help you along uh, help you along your journey on trying to get better skin because you'll be able to avoid certain things and try to change your diet with a high potassium diet okay we want to get we want to consume copious amounts of that because it's going to help balance balance out the body and a lot of the foods that have potassium in it are going to have all the properties that we need like avocado like pineapple has something called bromelain it's in the core of the pineapple so if you're eating Pineapple, never cut out the core. Just eat that, cut it in slices to eat the core as well. And basically leafy greens, a lot of greens are rich in potassium too. And we need a lot of potassium, a lot, to get the uh, the, the daily value that we're, we're supposed to get. So it's hard to get that, to eat seven cups of vegetables or you know, three avocados and 10 bananas, whatever it takes. But it's, we, do, we do have to get a lot of it. So if you're not, get as much as you can. Don't stop eating it, uh, whatever, whatever food you decide to get it, get it from. Broccoli is a super green food, get plenty of that. All right, healthy fats, coconut oil. Again, I can't get enough of it, I'm addicted to it. I'm actually low on it right now, I'm pretty mad because I'm like, what, what's my life gonna be like without coconut oil? But I'm gonna hang in there. I gotta get to the supermarket and get it again. Just been busy. Cook my eggs with it every single day. I put it in my smoothies tablespoon every single day anytime I get my get a chance to get coconut oil in my diet I'm gonna I'm gonna do it plus I eat coconut oil. all right so olive oil get an extra virgin organic olive oil and make sure that it goes it comes in a dark bottle make sure that you can trace it it should have a lot number that's how you pick out good olive oil don't cook with that one that will be on top of your food your drizzling your toast your salad Whatever, whatever you put olive oil on. Sometimes I'll even make a, make like a brown rice pasta, and I'll do a garlic and oil uh, topping. You know, I might cook a little, a little oil and garlic together, just to get just to coat the the pasta, and then I'll, you know, drizzle some really good olive oil on top of that, just to really give it a good kick. It's a good flavor. <clears throat> olive oil has the polyphenols. Again, if you cook that. It's gonna kill those, and the health benefits of olive oil will go out the window. It's still, it's still okay olive. Oil. It's still, a, it's still an okay oil to cook with, but if you want to get the benefits, don't cook it, right? So, and that is a, is a medium chain fatty acid. We have coconut oil is a medium chain organic butter. Butter is not our, is not our enemy. Butter is our friend, right? We just don't need to consume copious amounts of it, but we want to consume it, right? So. It's a short chain uh, fatty acid. For that. That's good, it means use, it gets used for energy pretty quickly. Um, we could do a combination of all, all of these. And of course, omega-3s. And when you're, uh, and you can get this to, in a supplement form, you know, a capsule, like a blue oil capsule. I generally take it every single day. And when you wanna get that, you look for words on the bottle that say sustainably sourced, extra virgin, cold pressed, you want to be able to trace these oils and find out where they where they kind of come from. Uh, krill oil, you know, you might there are some in um, you know like anchovies and things like that. But I would you know I would go with salmon. I would uh, Alaskan wild caught. You know look 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 for words like that on your bottle. And generally, a lot of these oils will say the same thing: extra virgin, cold cold pressed. That means they're not heated, right? That's what we look we want to look for something that's not heated. Because once you, once you heat oil, it loses all its health properties. And especially ones like, like vegetable oil, right? That's already bad to begin with. It's toxic. And then you cook it, and then it just makes it 10 times worse. 
So Mega 3 you can get through salmon and of course like I said you get through a, a supplement. Alright nuts and seeds. I put cheese seeds every day in my smoothie. Flax is something you could also put in your smoothie. Alters the taste of your food just a little bit but it definitely helps keep things moving. It's, it's, it's a form of fiber right. It's also a form of healthy fat and the form of fiber. Just want to just give you a little warning about flax. When you heat it up, let's say you're putting in, in your oatmeal or maybe if you're making a healthy pancake or something, it, it kind of runs through you. Just, 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 just be warned. Don't use too much of it. Eat the same thing with chia. Chia is definitely a preference for me. It doesn't alter the taste. My brother makes these freaking flax pancakes that it's, if you eat one, you're going to be in the bathroom real, real soon. I'm just saying just say that, all right? So be careful with the dosage. Stop it a little bit at a time. You definitely want to try to get it in your, in your body. It's a good, it's a good form of fiber and a really good seed. One of the healthier seeds and good form of fat as well. And, and uh, these even have chia chi and flax even has omega threes in there too, uh, specifically chia. So again, a lot a lot of these have the same properties. Uh, but again, I just had to I just tried to itemize them for you. That's all. Almonds, again, can be a healthy fat but we're going to put it in nuts and seeds categories. Now, we have number eight, which is apple cider vinegar, ACV. This actually acts as a, almost as an antioxidant, if you, if you think about it. It helps keep the pH in our blood and our stomach, while the acid level, or the pH, you know, a healthy pH level, we keep it uh, controlled if you drink apple cider vinegar every day. Okay, and that helps to make sure it, the healthy acid in our stomach make sure we break down food, right? Because the acid, if we're too alkaline, we can't break down food. And that's what happens as you get older, you get in your 50s, 60s, your body becomes a little bit more alkaline and we don't break down food as much. And that's when people start to get issues like uh, <clears throat> indigestion or bloated and things like that because our, our stomach is not acid enough to break that food down. So it kind of keeps us healthy and keeps our pH levels really healthy. So we want to do that. So it seems like a lot, right? Well, check this out. I mean, in, in, in one, I can get this in my body in pretty much 30 minutes because I'll wake up, I get the water and the apple cider vinegar. Boom, that's done. And one smoothie, one smoothie, I'll get every single one of these. I'll get bone broth collagen powder. That's particularly what I use, a bone broth collagen powder. And as we know, collagen is really good for the hair, skin, and nails. It's said that if you eat a certain part of an animal, like let's just say cartilage or the joint, that's the part that's going to help you most. It's going to help your joint or cartilage. So if you eat that of an animal, which like the joints and cartilage, you get chondroitin, you eat that, and then it's going to give you health, healthy uh, joints and uh, cartilage. Same thing, hyaluronic acid. It's the skin of a chicken. You eat that, and it's going to help your skin. Collagen, we all know, we start to lose that as we get older. And that's going to help our skin as well. Keeps our skin full and bouncy and fluffy. So, moving on. In one smoothie, I'll get a bone broth collagen powder. I get berries. I might do leafy greens coconut oil, a piece of avocado in every smoothie. Makes it really rich and creamy. Again, coconut oil down here. I'll say leafy greens, coconut oil, and chia seeds. And almonds, generally, in every smoothie. It's not as hard as you think. You just have to arm yourself with the right ingredients. Have it around. Have yourself a little smoothie station like I have here. Got my Nutribullet. Right? I love that thing. I cannot live without it. Every single day I use it. Arm yourself with the good stuff and it's going to be there. Make sure you don't bring the bad stuff in. Make sure that you don't bring in the non-negotiables. Okay, that means the things with the ingredients that you just cannot have in the house. Like for me, no high fructose corn syrup, no, no partially hydrogenated oils, and nothing with MSG, artificial, artificial colors and you know, sweeteners like that. That just can't come in the house. I have kids. If, if it's there, they might want to eat it. And sometimes I even want to eat it like an Oreo cookie. Right. So, okay, that's just what we bring in the food. Now I'm gonna go over 
Uh, still part two, but the next segment, and we're going to go over what kind of supplements, vitamins, and minerals we need to help our skin. Hello, my name is Charles Basallo. I want to thank you again for watching this video. If you could please subscribe and leave some comments below. We'll talk to you again real soon.